This fragrance, see what I deal with. Unedited. You guys like real shit, right? This fragrance right here has moved me enough to do a full review, and that means something. Stay tuned. Here's some codes to save you some cash on your next Middle Eastern niche or designer fragrances. My name's Neeb, welcome back to Aromatics. So look, today we're gonna be talking about an Arabian Oud fragrance, but it's not just the Arabian Oud fragrance. A lot of Arabian Oud fragrances you can see behind me, all of these are a part of their known series, but some of the ones that are lesser known are their actual Arabian blends. The Arabian blend series has a couple of fragrances that are unique. They're all named after some archeological significant monument or rock or stone. This is Jabal al Khaen. This fragrance has a very appropriate name for what it's doing, Jabal al Khaen, and it's basically translated into the mountain of cotton, literally exactly that. And it's very appropriate for this name because this is going to be a fragrance that's in the realm of fabric softeners. Let me set the grounds really quick. I generally don't like soapy fragrances, but not all soapy fragrances are created the same. A couple of soapy fragrances that are famous that we all know of includes Prada Lome and the original Dior Homme. Not the newer ones with the ISOE Super Bomb that just smells dry and woody and every day. That's this one. This is the old school one where it has that lipstick makeup uh, buttery iris quality in it. And this one still, in fact, it still does. Not only those fragrances uh, can be mentioned, but also Amouage Reflection Man along with a sleeper fragrance from Amouage. Amouage Dia Man. Dia Man is actually a really good one if you haven't checked that out and you like reflection. Check out Dia. I like Dia actually just a little bit more. So like I was saying, this fragrance rests or lays in a fragrance category that is very similar to these, except this is going to be the most luxurious of them all. There is a whole nother spectrum to soapy fragrances where it goes soapy, floral, feminine, and white musky, whereas this one doesn't really go in that territory. Sure, it is soapy and floral, but it also has this nice buttery quality to it. It has just the right amount of sweetness and a slight undertone of spice. So at the top of this fragrance, some of the notes include juniper berries, bergamot, grapefruit, cardamom, and lavender. And at that top, mostly what you get is gonna be the bergamot, some of that lavender, and cardamom. Mostly it's gonna be this lavender with that bergamot, obviously some citrus tops. And underneath it all is gonna be this very lightly, mildly spiced cardamom. Super freaking sexy stuff. I rate this fragrance right off the top a 10 out of 10 all the way down into the dry down. It's not going to be for everybody, but for those of you that have a taste for the aforementioned Prada Lome and the original Dior Homme, this is a luxury end version of this. And if you know me and my taste, this is one of my favorite fragrances of all time, including Dior Homme Parfum. This one, however, does this similar vibe without so much of that cedar. So it takes this entire makeup vibe DNA, adds a little bit more of a Middle Eastern tinge to it with that cardamom. And as you get into the mid, you start to detect the sweetness. It starts off relatively uh, bright because it's attributed to the jasmine, which gives it this natural honey sweetness. But then over time, within the first hour and a half, maybe two hours, you're gonna start to feel like this is warming up. It's getting denser, warmer, literally warmer from the ambers in the base as well. In the middle of this fragrance, you have this freesia and you have the jasmine. The freesia, you can kind of detect it. To my nose, freesia smells like a mixture of something aromatic and white floral. It gives almost like this cooling white floral effect to my nose. And you don't get too much of it. It's not something minty. It doesn't attribute much of anything really, in my opinion. If you're well-trained and you know what freesia smells like, then you might be able to discern it, but even then, it's done in a low dose. The jasmine, however, does play hand in hand with the tonka beans, so it's nothing that's really gonna be jasmine-centric, but mostly what this is centered around is gonna be the lavender, the iris, the cardamom, and that sweetness. Super sexy stuff. Arabian Oud does have a lot of banger fragrances, and out of all of the Arabian blends, this has to be one of the top ones. There are a couple of them that I have in my collection, and I already spoke about Jebel El Fil, and Jebel El Fil is the perfect opposite spectrum of the whole soapy vibe. So with Jebel El Fil, if you haven't seen my review, I highly recommend you go and check that out, just to know what the Arabian blends are like. And this one is a little bit more towards the soapier, spicier types of things. Whereas this one, the Jebel El Khaen, has more of like this buttery and sweetness. This lacks the sweetness, it just focuses on those florals and the soapiness and for that reason I like the the one with a little bit more character This not only has the soapiness It also has the sweetness the spiciness and a little bit of those aromatic nuances coming from that lavender and the other fragrance notes This is an amazing fragrance and I definitely would pick it over Jebel El Fil as far as the gender
here goes. Both of these are unisex. I feel like Jebel El Fil can be rocked easier by a woman, whereas this, honestly, either one. Man or woman, you can rock this. If you're a lady that can get away with something like Diorome, then you can absolutely get away with this. It's this buttery, fatty, uh, very beautiful fabric softener. It's almost thick in quality. And if there was a texture to this, it would be that of mousse. So lavender is attributed to a lot of uh, Fougere classic vibe fragrances. I can kind of sense this, almost this mousse quality to the texture of the fragrance to this DNA. So sometimes I do attribute, especially when I study a fragrance really, you know, really deeply, I can attribute like a texture to the fragrance. And if this had one, it would be a mousse, a buttery mousse with an undertone of cardamom to that mousse. Gorgeous fragrance, super buttery. This is one that I highly recommend. If, like I said, I have to emphasize on this a little bit more, if you enjoy fragrances that have this whole lipstick, uh, iris, buttery vibe DNA, one of the best in that realm or category of fragrances. As far as the performance for this one, on clothing, next day, easily. And for the nature of this fragrance, for it to last in the next day is actually pretty impressive. On skin, when you spray this on, it's gonna be like you showered. It's gonna stick there for a good eight hours. This is beast mode stuff. But the nature of this fragrance, it's projection. It's a soft, buttery, smooth fragrance. Yes, it does have a little bit of those aromatics and the spicy nuances, but it's perfectly enveloped in this buttery texture that it's not really gonna be anything that's smacking people in the face. And for that reason, this is gonna make it so much more appropriate in a lot of occasions. I personally wouldn't wear this out on like dates or things like that, but I would wear it more in casual events or if you want to go somewhere where you just want to smell clean but in the sexiest and most luxurious way possible. This is luxury clean at its finest. Earlier I mentioned that it was in the same category of something like Reflection Man, but if you took Reflection Man types of fragrances but you removed that carbonation from the uh, spices or whatever peppers are in that fragrance, then this would be closer to something like Reflection Man. But Reflection Man is quite different. I don't want you to get it mistaken with it being anywhere near this, but it's in the same category or family of fragrances. That one is definitely sharper and a little bit more uh, zingy at the top from some of those peppers. So Jebel Al Kain is a 10 out of 10 for me. Personally, I love this stuff and I would absolutely recommend this as a blind buy if you enjoy, if you enjoy that buttery iris like myself. It's not every day that a fragrance gets a 10 out of 10 from me, especially in the expensive realm. Granted, there are a lot of fragrances that get 10 out of 10s in the cheapy realm just because of the whole price point and you know what you get bang for buck and what you get versus what you pay, sure, they can get that score, but when you're paying 200 plus dollars and you get a 10 out of 10, that's not very common. So check this one out. Arabian Oud, Arabian Blend, Jebel Al Ghotun. That's pretty much all I have to say about this fragrance. If you enjoyed watching this video, make sure to leave a like, hit that subscribe button until the next one. Oh, and before we go, if you own this fragrance, please let me know down in the comments what you think. Let the people know. And until the next one, peace.